Hey, it's time for another edition of Singles Only Podcast. My name is Paul Farber. I'm your host. Thank you for listening uh, to this podcast. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to be more grateful for the great things I have in my life. And this is one of them, the Singles Only Podcast. And all you fans, I love when you guys reach out to me telling what you think of the podcast and what... Uh, what uh, the guests were like for you and how they've related to you. I really, really appreciate it. also want to shout out to all the new fans I've gotten, uh, received in the recent weeks uh, performing uh, in Chicago. Again, uh, I had a lot of new fans uh, from the Zany Show. I hosted Andy Haynes, great comedian. You should check him out. Uh, follow him on Instagram and his podcast with his wife, Rosebud. Um, super fun. And I really appreciate you guys asking me when I'm going to be performing at the places you want us to play. Uh, quick note, I don't have an agent. So when you guys tell me you want me to come to your city, I actually look up the place, contact them. But also contact the venues. Tell them that you want to see me, see the comedians you really love. It really means a lot. It takes a second to do it, just like I always ask you to review um, the podcast and share it. That's just as important. Uh, I get, I got a lot of people ask me when I'm performing at so-and-so place. There's new gatekeepers everywhere, and uh, believe me, I'm trying <laughs> to get into these places. So if you want to see me at your favorite venue, hit up the venue and say, hey, when is Paul Farvar coming back, or when is Paul Farvar coming here, and let them answer for you. I, I don't I don't have any answers for you, but I am going to be playing in Chicago at Awesome Venues, Lincoln Lodge this weekend, and uh, Glenview, uh, August 13th, 14th. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 13th, 14th. And then uh, I will be at McCurdy's in Sarasota, the August 19th through the 21st. Headlining CG's in Bolingbroke, one of my favorite new venues, August 27th, 28th. And then Stuck with Paul at Lincoln Lodge, my new show. Check it out. Pat Tomasulo from WGN will be there. Maggie DiPaolo, my friend Kyle Scanlon as well. Check that out. Uh, and then next month, Oklahoma City, Arkansas, Vegas, Reno, all the cool places um, all the kids are going to. Um, if you want to buy a shirt, the Star 69 Better Call Paul shirts, super soft shirts, half the proceeds go to Parkinson Foundation. I've raised over $1,000 for them already this month. I'm going to continue doing it in August. I mean, last month, I should say. So if you want a shirt, reach out to me, pfarvar at gmail.com or on my website. And uh, this episode, super fun episode with Kate Kennedy. I'm really excited that this happened. i um, it's a fun episode. You're going to love it. Uh, f- comedian and former porn star. She has a lot of great things to say. Fun, fun conversation. You will love it. I did. But also check out our sponsors. Hey, all you guys know that I used to be a lawyer. Still am, but, you know, kind of just in the background, if you will. But my friend, Scott Shapiro, he is a full-time lawyer. You guys maybe have injured on the job, need compensation, or you're just injured somewhere and you don't know what to do. You're entitled to way more money than you think you are sometimes. Not always, but most of the time. And my friend, Attorney Scott Shapiro, has been helping people for over 20 years in this regard. If you've been injured, give him a call. 312-648-8800 312-648-8800 or email him at scott at scottshapirolegal.com. He's a full service law firm. So in addition to doing workers comp cases, PI cases, he also handles all legal needs, including entertainment law. That's right. He's an entertainment lawyer. He's worked on a lot of musicians cases, a lot of contracts, negotiations, and reviews of contracts for your needs, whether you're a comedian, musician, all that good stuff. All his consultations are free of charge initially. So don't take a chance and wait. Call him, 312-648-8800, or check out his website, scottshapirolegal.com. Call him today. Tell him I sent you. You will not regret it. It's time for another edition of Singles Only Podcast. My name is Paul Farver, your host. Uh, We are doing this one via zoom so if you're listening you can actually go to my youtube page at paul f comedy and watch it live we have a special treat for you uh hilarious stand-up comedian and former porn star kate kennedy hey kate hey paul thanks for having me thanks for doing it uh did i pronounce it right (laughs) yes yeah it's uh it's such a hard name to get right you know yeah it's such a it's such an easy name must be nice You know, well, I mean, it's a stage name because like, obviously, I mean, I kept my name from porn even when I retired and got it because I was like, I already have 
60,000 yeah. Twitter followers. I'm not going to fucking change it now. Hell yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, so you are a comedian in LA and you're single. Yes, I'm very, very single. Okay. And how, why would you describe, how would you describe why you're single? What do you think are the reasons? Choice, difficulty, LA sucks. Give me some, give me some basis because you're funny, you're hot. Come on. So for a really long time, it was definitely a choice. Like I very actively made the choice to not date anyone while I was in the adult industry. Um, just cause I was focusing on work also like you, you can either kind of date other people in the industry or like you can date a civilian, but they're going to have a really hard time kind of understanding what your lifestyle is like. And right, like, right. there's so many people that will say like, oh, I'm totally okay with it. I could definitely date a girl that does porn or a girl with an OnlyFans. And like, I think people really idealize it and then they right. don't know what the reality of that is like, which I also think is really similar to being a comic. Right. Well, I always <laughs> tell people not to date comedians as comedians. And I, and the thing is, is we don't have like a right, like an HR department to like regulate this shit. Is that how it was in the, in the adult world too? Or it's, or were people dating, uh, I mean, they definitely there are people that date like I know a ton of like adult performers that like date other adult performers that are married, like actually a couple right. of my friends that are in the industry just either got engaged or just got married, um, which is awesome. Like for to some other to other uh, stars, yeah, yeah, to yeah, other yeah. stars, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's like such a power couple thing. Plus, also, yeah. you, you have built in talent <laughs> if you right. need to do something um, like I often joke, like, oh, <laughs> I wish I had an OnlyFans boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, just like get me out of bed and be like hey babe we gotta go shoot this because I'm awful at motivating myself to do it right. um but I mean like yeah a lot of people that I worked with in the industry were quite a bit older than me so a lot I worked with a lot of people that already were married or in relationships um and then yeah it's just kind of a small dating pool and I didn't really vibe with anybody I tend sure. to be I mean a big part of why I'm single is probably because I'm really picky sure um and I kind of know right away when I meet someone like if it's a fit or not but it's such a small number of people that I actually feel that way with so right. yeah well how how are you what is the most common way that you meet people uh now that now that you are looking again I guess yeah. well yeah so like I've been talking to my mom a lot about this because and she's been like giving me advice my parents have been married for like 30 years they have a great marriage um, and it's weird I mean I turned to 27 this year and all of a sudden I'm starting to think more like hey it would be really nice to have like a partner. Like I don't really, I mean, it's still fun to hook up with people and stuff, but it's like, I am kind of at a point where I'm like, Oh, I actually like want to date more seriously with yeah. like an eye towards like potentially like really finding someone. Um, I think that would be cool. I don't know where to meet them. Right. Uh, this is what I'm talking to my mom. about. <laughs> I was talking to her yesterday and she was like, maybe you should try like community theater to meet a man I was like I think you fundamentally misunderstand like men and also what kinds of men do community theater <laughs> right I don't uh, think you're gonna find the guy there to be honest not one that's attracted to me right, uh, exactly um but yeah so I mean it's kind of hard like especially as an adult in a city like I've had a lot of friends um but nobody really and also like as a comic I mean I don't think I want to date someone that like hangs out at comedy clubs every night right. like and that's where I hang out. So those are the only other people I meet. So I've been thinking about getting on like dating apps, but I dating apps are so cringy. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think it's it's already from doing this show for five fucking years now and all my closest friends in comedy are females. It's already hard to date uh, for female comics because guys have ego issues when they're not the funny one. You can't date a civilian, oh. right? And you oh, yeah. And you can't really date a comedian because that's just bad it's just bad to you know shit where you work yeah. um and then you add add the add the part that you uh you were an adult porn star so like that's intimidating to people too oh yeah it's like and I don't think of myself as being intimidating to people so I'm always just like wait why don't they like like come on and then right. like, oh and then my friends will have to point it out they're like don't you think that like there's a lot going on and they may also like when you're a comedian too especially female comedian like a lot of times I'm the only woman on a show, yeah. um, which is fine with me. Like, I, I mean, I joke about it where I'm like, I am totally fine being the only woman in a room. I've done a lot of gangbangs. Um, I'm totally comfortable in that situation. But um, it's hard. I mean, like I had a date with a guy a couple of months ago where I had a show 
that night. And I was like, you know, we'll just go, I'll just do it. And then we can go get drinks afterwards and it'll be fine. We'd like gone to dinner. Um, and as soon as we got there, I realized like, oh, like here's all of this, this huge group of dudes that are my friends. But like the way you talk to other comedians stuff, like it is a little flirty, even though it's like, I would never fuck any of these people. Um, But I like got there with him and I like instantly clicked in my head. I was like, this is so uncomfortable for him. Oh my God. Like, I like, I apologize. I was like, I'm really sorry. Like I should not have brought you to this. Like it didn't, it didn't even go through my brain that like, oh, this would be a really uncomfortable situation to put someone in. Well, how did you meet that guy? Um, I met him through a mutual friend okay. and we went out like a couple of times. So the ending of that date was that he got very uncomfortable and ended up the show was like weird too. Like it wasn't like the, the booker hadn't like gotten all of the promo out. So it was supposed to be like a show at an at like legit venue. And then there was something weird with the venue. So it ended up being almost yeah. more of an open mic. I'm like yeah. waiting forever. It was kind of shady. There's like these two guys in the corner selling homemade shroom juice. And oh, so excellent. Yeah. Right. So my date who's already like had several drinks, um, buys a bottle and like drinks an entire bottle of shroom juice, like knowing knowing it was shroom juice. Yes. Like mushroom, like psychedelic mushroom with basically Gatorade or whatever. I don't know. I I don't buy unlicensed bottles of drugs from strangers. (laughs) Sounds like a bad decision. Yeah. So he is, I mean, gone. And I'm like trying to like (laughs) keep this situation. I'm like trying to not embarrass myself in front of the book, like trying to just keep things on even keel. And he's like getting very upset and wants to leave. And I'm like, well, I have to do my time. But I'm like, I, and he lived really close to, he was like, he kept saying he wanted to walk. And I was like, even though it's like three blocks, like we're in Santa Monica, there's like a lot of homeless people. It's really late at night. I'm like, I don't want to call you an Uber to take you three blocks, but I also don't really want it on my conscience that you're going to just wander off into the night. Um, And yeah, we ended up getting in a fight and then he just left. And at that point, I was just like, all right, fuck it. Sorry, dude. Like, yeah, go home. Um, Yeah, that was like one of the worst dates I think I've ever had. I haven't had a lot of super bad dates. That was a really bad one. Well, do you um, have you gone on the apps at all to try to meet people that way or? Yeah. I mean, I go off and on with them. Like I don't like Bumble cause I don't like making the first move. Sure. Um, I was on hinge for a little while and I like talked to a few people, but like, even in LA, it's like, they're either like an actor or a yeah, model yeah. or like a real estate agent. And I'm like, we just don't have anything in common. Right. Like we just don't like, yeah. So it's, you, it's a, oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, it's just a weird dating pool. Yeah. Like, I don't no, think I would no. have more luck in other cities either. Like, I think I, I'm such a weird little niche demographic. I think it would still be hard. But uh, yeah, especially in L.A., it's like, oh, yeah, not- L.A. is a whole nother. I remember the first I used to go there like two or three times a year. And uh, every time I'd go on one of those dating apps, I'd be like all my friends that were comedians, were like, don't put your comedian like it's it's not worth it. And then I realized I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a bad idea here. Like, yeah, no, no one is like if you say you are, there's no motivation. There's always an ulterior motive to meet up. So it's always, yeah. And well, a lot of people in LA too will like, it's almost like they're dating for like the connections. Right. Like I've had people straight up like swipe right or whatever and like try to talk to me. And I'm like, wait, are you trying to get past? Yeah. Like what the fuck? Like (laughs) I can't introduce you to anyone. Um, Like, yeah. I I, I can't help you. Yeah. Literally, like I've had people be like, can you introduce me to Tom Segura? And I'm like, no. Like, do you think we hang out? Like, (laughs) it's so crazy. Do you, um, yeah, I I just feel like it's so, what's the longest relationship that you've had as an adult? Um, I, way before I was in porn, um, when I was in college and then after I dated and lived with a guy for, I think like two and a half, almost three years, Oh wow! Okay. 21, like 23. Yeah. And like we, it was, I'm so bad at breaking up with people. I like just straight up moved across the country and he called me like six months later and was like, so we're not together anymore. Huh? I was like, oh not my really. God. Um, well, I'd gotten a job and I was, so I'd yeah. moved to Portland. He was still in Denver. Um, and we just kind of, I was, he was never going to leave Colorado. I knew that I didn't want to stay. Um, and it just kind of turned in. I actually had introduced him to his now fiance okay. before I left. Cause I was like, Oh, like this Haley girl's really cool. And like, she's like a couple years older than me and a little more willing to like put up with your bullshit. <laughs> and that's hang. That's I think funny. you guys would be a great match. And yeah, lo and behold, like six months later, they were engaged. Wow. So good for him. Yeah. Sure. 
still good friends. His mom called me uh, when he announced it on Facebook and was like, Kate, I just want you to know, like, we still love you. You'll always be a part of our family. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Like, so and then weird. I like realized, it was, yeah, I was like, at first I was like, did my ex-boyfriend's mom find my porn? <laughs> is that what she's texting me calling me about and then I was like I looked and I was like oh he's engaged and I was like no 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 Mary like it's totally fine I yeah. think they're great together and I was like are you kind of saying that you like me better than her because okay fair well that's funny because um my longest relationship was two years and my girlfriend in law school uh my mom would still hang out with her after yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing like she's like I just think you made a mistake I'm like what are you t-? I mean and she she ended up being uh you know she ended up being a lesbian for a while and then she went back and forth I'm like mom like you just it's just not fair but some people some people uh especially like uh moms of Mm -hmm. of boys get attached to first love or whatever I really he was quite a bit older than me I think we I was 21 when we started dating I think he was 28 oh wow okay so he, yeah he's in his 30s now so he was a little older than me and had been in relationships but like his family was really close and they, I mean I loved them his family was wonderful like we would yeah. all hang out and like I really did I mean I still care a lot about them like I, it was a very good breakup in terms of like we are still friends we both right. moved on to things that I think are a better fit for both of us um I got to keep the dog so that was great that win-win <laughs> Was yeah. his family like religious or something too? Or no, I mean they were like loose because they were uh very Italian. I've dated a lot uh, of Italian guys. I'm I'm super Irish Catholic, okay. um, but I've dated a lot of Italians. I think they're like the more fun Irish people, yeah. like similar, but they're more fun. <laughs> um, and so you know, they were from uh like Long Island and were just yeah, his mom was like classic, like Long Island mom in Colorado. Uh, yeah, mm, okay. they had moved out, yeah. So like yeah, they were just very fun people. They would have like big dinners like on Sundays and Christmases. And he had a little niece who was like three or four. So she was really cute. We'd always get to see her. So, yeah, you know, yeah, it was fun. It was fun to be in. Incl- I, I mean, it meant a lot to me that they like included me in their family so much. Um, and, and you said you wanted to find a partner um, now. Are you do you want to get married and have kids? Is that something on your uh, radar? Yeah. At some point? Yeah, like, it's okay. so weird. I like didn't. I mean, I've basically been single for pretty much all of my 20s. And yeah. like, I was like, totally fine with that. And kind of like, you know, maybe I'm never going to meet anybody. And that's okay. And, you know, but now it's like, yeah, it's weird. It's like clicked where I'm like, oh, it would be, it would be really nice. Like, I'm not, I'm kind of just putting it out in the universe for yeah. it to happen. Um, Like I have dated people since him, like uh, long distance and stuff. There's been a few people where I was like, oh, I actually could see this person like being that for right. me um but for various reasons you know like sometimes it's just not the right time where you live really far away from each other or whatever so you know hopefully I, I'm on good terms with like pretty much all of my exes which is good. I think that's good yeah. yeah me too I like I I just don't I, so if you if you do want to have kids then yeah I, I'm all for marriage but I think marriage is an outdated institution and you said your parents have been together for 30 years so mm-hmm it's worked in your family and my parents have been together. I just, I just don't, I just think it's in today's society. It just doesn't yeah. seem to make sense. I mean, I've talked to my mom a lot about it because like for a long time, like I didn't think my parents had a good marriage. <laughs> like they got married. I think they were like 32, 33 when they got married. Yeah. So they were like a little older yeah. by like yeah. that time. Yeah. So, cause my mom has like three sisters. They all got married at like 20. Um, yeah. So they were definitely the last ones and had met as adults and were both very independent. So they were never super like lovey-dovey or like affection it really yeah. towards each other. But they're both like now I look at their marriage as an adult and I'm like, oh, my God, that's so awesome. Yeah. Like you have this person that just loves you and supports you and is going to be there for you. But also like they go on their own vacations. They have their own friends. My dad actually like lived apart from my mom for like seven years. He was working at Apple. And so he moved to Austin. Okay. And was living in Austin and he would go back and visit my mom on the weekends. And like, I remember having conversations with my sister being like, they're going to get divorced. Like, yeah, who, who the fuck could do this? I mean, they came out of it. He retired last year at the beginning of uh, the pandemic was basically like, I'm not getting on another plane so I can work from home or I'm going to retire Um, because he was turning 60 and he came home. And it's, I mean, it's crazy to see them together. I've never seen them this happy. They're like in love. Yeah. They're like dating. Yeah. They just bought a vacation home. They're like 
constantly traveling. I'm like, we, we literally had to say, like, tell them in our group text, like you have to fucking tell them yeah. when you leave town. Cause they don't answer their phones. Right. And like, I will all be trying to call them for like days. I'm like, geez, I hope you guys are okay. And they're like, Oh, we were in North Carolina or we were in Tulum. I'm like, what the fuck guys? Like, That's crazy. Yeah. Well, so. Well, so they have a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. You want to have kids. You said I think that would be super cool. I mean, I'm not, I've always wanted to adopt or be a foster parent as well. Okay. Like down the line, I think um, that's something I would be really interested in, especially if I like made it big. Right. Like if I, you know, really was successful and had a lot of money, like that's just something that's close to my heart and sure. it's something I'd want to do for people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of joke. I'm like, I, I'll, I, I'll wait a few years. I want to do it soon. I still have good abs and I don't really want to fuck that up. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're also very young, so you have a lot of time to to do all this stuff and, you know, pursue your, your personal interests and your career and your, uh, your path and all that stuff. But like, what are you, um, you don't really have to, how how do you think you're going to meet someone? Cause you can't really, you can't date comedians and your, your schedule is going to be fucked up for the next five to seven years, at least Mm -hmm. not longer. Um, Yeah. So what are the, what are the kind of, well, let's first, let's talk about what are your types? You said you like, you tend to date Italian dudes. Is there like, if you, if you lined up all the guys you've been attracted to or dated, do they all look the same or is it, are they like one of these things doesn't belong here type of thing? They don't all look the same. I would say like my type, well, one, I'm short. So that's actually good for me. I'm happy to date a short king. Um, If I don't have to wear heels, I'm pleased with that. I'm like five, one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So the last guy I dated, even like kind of casually, was five six, um, okay. which was great because like we would be with going out with all his friends, and it was like the delegation from Munchkin Land was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it was it was really cute, and we could also like share sweatshirts and stuff. Um, but, You're gonna get uh, so many DMs from short dudes now from this fucking from just that same. And so I apologize in advance, but okay. I mean, I'm okay with it. Like short kings slide into my DMs. It's all good. Um, I oh, you know, well, like. I, cause I know there are women that are like insecure about that. And yeah. I'm like, well, like you literally cannot be shorter than me. Well, like there's, I've there's, never. Yeah. I can understand that, but there's like, it's funny because I'll be on the sites and people are like, if you're, unless you're six foot or taller, don't even swipe or whatever. It's like, dude, you're yeah. five one. Why the fuck? First of all, then like, I, I'm not like. That just seems inconvenient. Short. Yeah. It's One of my weird. high school boyfriends was six, four and I like, couldn't even kiss him. Like he had to bend down. Yeah. Oh, okay. so yeah. I mean, the Short only pro cut. I could see for that would be like he could reach stuff off the top shelf. Like that would be a cool <laughs> thing to bring to the relationship. Sure. But I have a lot of step stools. Yeah, the world is my jungle gym. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I go for I tend to like like darker hair. Um, okay. like not super. I mean, like none of my exes are like models. Like they're you know just kind of good looking. I like funny guys. I like smart. I like and I was talking to my mom about this too because I was saying like you know what do you look for like in a partner what really characteristics um and she said you know the biggest thing and I think this is so true it made so much sense when she said it is that you have to find someone that's your equal like you have to find your equal and that means they have to be as intelligent as you are and as driven as you are and she's like and she just told me and I'm not tooting my own horn here she's like that's gonna be a battle for you like you're gonna have trouble finding someone that is going to match you in that but she's like you have to um, because otherwise you'll get bored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I, I, and I agree with that hundred percent. I think class too, like when you're an equal, if you grew up in different sides of the tracks, yeah. for lack of a better word, it, mm-hmm. there is, there is a difficult in difficulty in understanding and, uh, and adapting to the way people treat things in a relationship, whether it's, you know, money issues or like comfort yeah. things or, or going out, whatever. Yeah. Um, but being intelligent, like whether it's book smart or street smart, Mm -hmm. like that is a huge, um, yeah, that's a huge thing that it's hard to, I think after like six or eight months, you realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oh, this is work. can't keep up. And I'm someone that's very like, I like to rib people. I like to go back and forth. I really need that kind of like that, that energy, that back and forth, that someone that's kind of quick and witty and fun. Um, and also just like secure with themselves. Like, I think if I want to date someone, I really want them to really like themselves and be comfortable and confident in themselves. Um, especially with like everything that I do, like 
yeah. really got to be secure and like trust that I care about you if you're going to, you know, because that's hard. I get it. Um, But yeah, insecurity is always kind of a big thing where I'm like, oh, no, that's it's not good. And then also just like, I mean, I don't always know exactly what I want to do, like especially in entertainment and comedy. You're always kind of like, oh, I just hope I get this next opportunity. Right, but right. I still like you're still driven. You still want to go someplace. Whereas like I've dated people in the past where like uh, my ex who just he was like, you know, I have this job. I live, you know, 20 minutes away from my parents and I'm this is what I want. That's yeah. it. Like, they, I was like they haven't left their comfort of their home. Yeah. I mean, some people just don't want to. I mean, I grew up in a small town. Um, I get why people like, you know, want to stay, but I didn't. So definitely someone that's like a little more adventurous and also fun, like just not, you know, you want someone that's going to like go on the adventures with you. And yeah. And yeah. So, well, it's hard. It's hard as a person that has like a unhealthy drive myself. And I think, uh, I think that's hard for some people to comprehend. And I think you added the added part that makes it hard is when you can't find someone that understands that drive. And especially when you're talking about security, I think that's the biggest obstacle you're going to face uh, as a comedian and a former uh, yeah. porn star, because guys are so fucking insecure around There's everything. Yeah. Even with like sex, like it's so funny. Cause like yeah. I'll have sex with like non porn people and they're always like, is this good enough? Like, am I good enough? This? I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God. Like, first of all, Oh, like nothing makes me drier. Um, and this, but like, I, I am good enough at this for the both of us. Like, just right. let me do it. Like, I'm so good at this just, and I enjoy it. Like I get off on getting other people off. Yeah. Um, so I love it when I can like blow a dude's mind that way. And also it's like, I don't need you to like be so good at this and be the best with you ever. Like, I don't need that. Like, it's okay. Has um, that been an issue where I just picture like it's, it's time to hook up and you could tell, you could see the brain follicles and the fucking guy going like, how do I even, I mean, I, I think it would be intimidating for anybody. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of myself being in that situation and I'd probably fucking freak out too. So do you have like a, a set speech or like a card you give to guys and be like, don't worry. Like, yeah, I got I'm this. always, <laughs> yeah, I'm always just like, I like, like I have had all of the sex literally, like I've yeah. done it all. Like I've, done it all it was enjoyable I don't want porn star sex on like a Tuesday night I'm I'm done with that like I don't need you to have like a massive penis like that's really okay with me um I have a friend your dms are gonna get blown up again like all these short guys with small dicks are gonna start dming me that's my type (laughs) um uh but no I mean like I tell them too I'm like I have a friend in the industry he's like the loveliest guy but he has literally a 14 inch penis yeah. I'm like do you think that guy gets laid regular because like most people can't or don't want to do that it hurts yeah. like that's not like a you know lazy Sunday morning fuck like that is <laughs> that is like Olympic level like I don't feel the need to do that on a regular basis so yeah I kind of I'm just like look we're gonna have fun it's okay. Like, again, I'm like, the sex is so secondary to me. Right. Like, it just is. I mean, I enjoy sex, especially with somebody that you really care about. I think that's like the best sex you can ever have, but it's not my focus at all. Well, like, the- Don't you think I, this is the one question I've had? Uh, and I, and I always think that, that the physical relationship is so important mm-hmm. to keep things interesting. Keep like, like you said, what, what your mom said about not being bored. Right. Um, there is a level of physical chemistry that's important in a relationship I feel like sometimes I've had the best relationships uh that weren't but then the physical chemistry wasn't there or vice versa so it's for me at least it's been really hard to match both of those things yeah like the phys I mean to me like physical chemistry like it's not even necessarily like sex it's just like are you comfortable like laying next to this person like holding their hand and like I'm not interesting yeah yeah like that that stuff is more important to me the intimacy the levels, right. The intimacy, yeah. And so, like, that, like, physical chemistry outside of, like, the bedroom, like, that's more important. I'm also not, like, a super, like, PDA, like, public affection kind of person. Yeah, I hate that. I'm, like, somebody that's, like, all on me. Like, if when we're out, I'm, like, oh, that's that's too much. Like, this is weird. Like, this is... I feel like we're making other people uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I can't hold hands in public. That's been a deal breaker for a lot of relationships. So I get that. Yeah. It's just, you know, well, and especially too, again, like if I'm at like a comedy or shows or something, like I can't have a guy like all up on me. Yeah. 
because I mean, whether or not I'm interested in any of these other comics, like I am aware of how they react to me. I'm aware right. that like they are attracted to me. Like if there's a guy all up on me, you know, like as shitty as it is, like that if the booker has a little crush on me, it's like fuck you over. Yeah, well, it's, it's also a over. security thing too. Like mm -hmm. the guy's probably insecure. It's like trying to mark his territory in a way. Yeah, like this one is mine. Right. Um, I also have a big thing with like guys where I'll go on like a few dates with someone. And again, this is not like tooting my own horn because I think this is their insecurity more than my awesomeness. But like, I'll go on like a couple of dates with them and they're just like instantly, they're like, I am in love with you. You are the best thing. Like, I yeah. want to marry you. You are great. And I'm like, you don't even know me. Right. Like, we've hung out a couple of times. Like, there's a lot of things I do that are irritating. Like, sure. yeah. Like, I'm like, you, you're idealizing me. And that puts me in a really uncomfortable position because the only way, place I can go from here is down. Like, all I'm going to do is disappoint you. Yeah. Because you're in love with something that you've completely created in your head. Do you, uh, do you create, uh, like, rules on dates in terms of when you get to a level of in intimacy with people or you just kind of let it go? Uh, whatever. I, like, I wouldn't say they're, like... Rules hard and fast rules um the older i get the more i do really like to get to know people before i want to like introduce that as much um sure. but i mean i've also had like first dates where i was like hell this is so fun like let's do it like yeah you know so it kind of just depends but i do try to like get to know people better and i found that too like for me if i do go too fast into that intimacy like that leads them to continue like idealizing right. um and that's like very bad. So I kind of have to be the one like to pump the brakes. Right. Um, and it's sort of hard to always be like the leader in a relationship. Yeah. You know, like it's there's a part of me where it's like, I would really like to meet someone where it's like, OK, we're playing at the same level. You are also wanting to get to know me and not just rushing into it. And, you know, you also are like being cautious, like which is with yourself. And like instead of just rushing headfirst. Right. Um. So like that would be very nice. <laughs> well, do you, are you are you pumping the brakes for yourself or for the other person or a little of both? A little of both. I mean, like I'm not someone where I will like I, I don't really do that where I'm like, oh, I meet someone. I'm like, this is the best person ever. Like yeah. I go slow most of the time. And yeah. so like I'm kind of doing it for them as well as for me. Um, but yeah, it's uh yeah, it can be kind of frustrating to have to do that all the time. Like I'm just like, oh, my God, I like just be like skeptical, like, yeah. to, like, you know, don't immediately assume it's so weird too. Cause like, I was not, uh, I was not like hot as like a teenager. You're I was not? very, I was very okay. average. I got stood up for the prom. No way. Uh, yeah. I was not the girl that like everyone was like trying to get with like, at all. Okay. Um, and then kind of in my early twenties, it was so all like ugly duckling, like overnight. When did uh, you, when did you, how old were you when you lost your virginity? I was 17, almost okay. 18. And it was his like 18th birthday. That was um, gift. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. I mean, it's like such a, it like sounds like an 80s movie. Like my parents were uh, on a ski trip with my sister and it was okay. his birthday. And I was like, oh, I have to finish this paper for English class. So I'm going to stay home this weekend. So I had that. We had the house for ourselves. It was his birthday. It was January. It was snowing. Um, and he, we had had this birthday party for him. Uh, he was very into like vintage. So it was like fifties greaser theme. It was really fun. And he and I went back to my house afterwards and, um, we like had, <laughs> uh, Frank Sinatra's my way was playing. Oh dear God. And, uh, yeah, we had sex for probably three minutes. Um, it was and then his he, first time too. It was his second time. Oh, okay. Um, and we had like gone to middle school together. Okay. Um, and he was a, yeah, very attractive guy. Um, really fun. He was a really talented artist. Um, oh, that's something I really like in people too, is like talent. Okay. Like I love, like he was a fantastic artist. Um, I dated a guy who was like an incredible piano player. Um, I find anything like artsy or like musical where it's just sure. like really good. It's like, oh, that's such a turn on. I always tell, I always tell comedians on the show that they should date musicians because here's why, not as a former musician, but uh, because we have similar hours, we're all creative, and we're in separate but equal like businesses. So yeah. there, there's a creative side, and you don't have to worry about the in fucking in the crowd, like in the same mm -hmm. business, like yeah. shitting where you work type bullshit. There's no yeah. politics, and they get it. 
yeah, they understand that like it's Friday night. We're not going to a movie. I'm at right. work. You're at work. Like we that's when we work is at night, like during the times when everyone else is going on a date. Um, and they always want to be comedians and comedians always want to be musicians. So it's like a it's like a, a yeah. yin yang of happiness. literally saying I'm like not musical at all. And I wish I was yeah. so badly. Um, but yeah, that guy that I dated that was a piano player would send me um, and like we're still on good terms too because he still does this sometimes but he would send me like videos of him playing the piano and like okay. singing me songs which I thought was like super romantic like he would send because he lived in New York and I was in LA um so we didn't get to see each other that often but he would like for my birthday he like sang me my favorite Beach Boys song um I have a video of him doing uh Elton John's Your Song and he gets to the part where he's like uh I'm not sure if they're green or they're blue and he like stops and he goes no I know they're green though and I was like <laughs> Um, my ovaries just exploded. <laughs> like, I'm literally gonna like rock your fucking world tonight. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, but yeah, they they get it, and it's uh, and they also get like the performance aspect of it, the you know the nerves, like how you feel when you don't totally knock it out of the park, right? Um, because dating they get someone- the hustle, they get the hustle of having mm-hmm. to go meet and all that bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, they understand like if you've bombed. They're not going to like keep like they're not going to question like why you're upset for the rest of the day. Um, It's a little different for us than it is for musicians. But yeah, definitely. The bad shows that they have having experienced both. But yeah. What's your what's the Beach Boys song? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is a great one, too, because we weren't like in the same city. So it was like, wouldn't it be nice if we were older, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. yeah, that was very sweet. So I loved getting those. I still get them from time to time. He's like my only friend on Snapchat. I literally have like, uh, don't add me on Snapchat if you're listening. No, I, I just forgot about, I actually just posted on Instagram that I'm like, I forgot about Snapchat and so did you. Cause I, like, I, I went on there and it was like, Hey, where have you been? Like it literally, I hadn't logged in, in like 30 days. So yeah, no, I, I literally just have it to talk to this one person wow. and I like it that way. What's um, so what I always tell people, like when you're looking for things, obviously you have a lot of things that you do like and what ideas of what you want and what you need. What are the deal breakers for you in terms of a relationship? Um, uh-huh. Other than, you know, obviously someone that's insecure. Um, yeah. Um, someone that's like irresponsible or can't take care of themselves. Like I, I've never paid a bill late in my life. Like I am very like responsible with that kind of stuff. I know how to, I know how to like take care of things. Um, I'm very handy. I, you know, I woodwork, I restore old furniture, I renovate stuff. Like I, I, yeah, I know, I know how to change oil and a tire. Like I, that, those competency things are really important to me. No, that's awesome. Um, Yeah. Well, it's like, it's fun, you know, and I want someone to, they don't have to be as good at it as I am I've been doing it my whole life so obviously you know I I know how to do these things but just like the interests are willing to try and then um the uh wait what was I gonna say uh yeah like responsibility um anyone that like uh this is like so shitty but like uh substance abuse problems like people that drink too much or stuff like that or don't have a healthy relationship with drugs like that's always such a red flag sure um and then wait, I had just thought of one and now I'm like blinking on it. It's all right. We'll, come, we'll get to it. Yeah, Substance like, abuse is definitely, uh, you shouldn't feel bad about that. That's like, yeah. it's always shocks me when I invite a girl that I'm dating to a show and they get like hammered and you're like, you know, you're at my work. Yeah. Right? Like, that was with the guy with the shrooms. I was like, you are embarrassing me right now. Yeah. yeah. Like this looks really bad. Oh, I thought, um, I remember what it was. Uh, people over like overly chivalrous dudes make me really uncomfortable what's overly chivalrous Chivalrous. like uh i've been like walking like you know that thing i didn't even know this was a fucking thing but like walking on the outside yeah and i'm like i I do that i always push people to the other side you don't like that you didn't know that well, like the times I've been doing it where like someone's done that like i was just i'm just trying to fucking walk down the street and like this guy would kept Funny. like zigzagging around and I kind of wander when I walk, like I'm not a sure. super straight. And so he just kept like, he kept like zagging around me. I was like, this is fucking annoying. Like I'm fine. The sidewalk is very wide. I it's, always, I understand. It. that's funny that you said that. Yeah. I mean, I understand. Or like, just like feeling like he needs to like really impress me and do all of this stuff. Yeah. Like it just kind of makes me uncomfortable. And like, I'm a very competent person. Like I can take, and also again, like I want an equal, I don't want someone that's going to treat me like I'm this fragile little like flower. 
<laughs> that can't do anything. I'm like, just let me do it. Like, you know, I mean, it's nice to an extent. I like it when someone like holds the door open for me, but like, I also yeah. went to Catholic school. I hold the door open for everyone. <laughs> like, I'm not someone that's going to like, like I instantly reach for it. I don't even think about it. And it's, I guess it's more when dudes like make a big deal out of that. Right. Where they're like offended that I would reach for the door or walk on the outside of the street. Like I'm somehow like fucking up their yeah. like game. I'm like I just, either of us can grab the door. It's 2021. Like, it's not a big deal. You get it next time. Okay. Right. Well, I know the, the two things that I always do as a joke, especially when you live in Chicago or like cities, people don't know what to do in the revolving door. Mm -hmm. So I always go in front of the, the, if I'm on a date, I'll be like, just so you know, guys are supposed to go first to push the door for the woman. And then they're like, Oh, I didn't know that. Cause most people don't know that. But the, the thing on the, the, the sidewalk, I always, I always do that. But I'll push the, I'll grab the person, I'll push you over. I'm like, I'm supposed to be on the outside. Yeah. But it's also like a neurotic thing with me. It's like, I just feel like there's yeah. the rightening. But uh, that's funny that that's overly yeah. chivalrous. But it's, yeah, I mean, it's not the biggest thing. I guess it's more, again, it kind of goes back to like the attitude where like I'm yeah. sometimes with guys like that. I'm like, do you want like a trophy for this? Like, would you like a, <laughs> like a ribbon or something? Cause like, this, yeah. like, you know, you don't, I like, th- that's a nice thing to do. But yeah, it's not. Right. You, <laughs> You're, there's no prize like you're not right. winning anything um because I mean it's kind of the same with guys like even dating me like with everything I've done and everything I do where like yeah sometimes they like act like they should be commended for dating me right it's like well I you know I I'm okay with all of this I'm I'm good with this I don't mind that you're naked on the internet it's like congratulations right. with, with the only fan stuff you mean too yeah. yeah yeah it's just I like it, there's just an attitude with that where it's like you know you can it's good to be okay with it I obviously want someone to be okay with it but like there's no yeah there's no prize for this yeah. like that's just a normal human nice thing to do yeah yeah it's called yeah it's called equality in the world but uh yeah again, yeah, yeah exactly so and I'm also some more it's like I don't mind like splitting the bill like I'm happy to do that like you know it's uh, I just, I, yeah, I don't like feeling like someone's just like taking care of me all the time. Right. Like I need that. I'm like, it would just, I, I want to like give you that, not have you like insist on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Equality is more important to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chivalry, but it makes sense. Well, Kate, we are out of time. I'm sorry we went a little long, but no, it's all it good. was fun. Um, it was very fun. I want to have you come back on and, and, and check up and see how things are. Cause I, I really, I think you, I think you need to date a uh, New Jersey Italian musician, like not Bruce Springsteen, but maybe he's in a Bruce Springsteen cover band. That would be so great for me because when I was a stripper, I used to dance to Bruce Springsteen all of the time. <laughs> that's I like, still one of my favorite ones. That's what I picture for you. Like, mm-hmm. like he's like, uh, he's like a divorcee and he's like uh, starting his new career and uh, you guys are going to, happily go off into the sunset on Santa Monica. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Where can where can people find out more about you, Kate, and your upcoming shows and stuff? Uh you can find me on Twitter at the OG Kennedy. That's the is in the OG like original gangster Kennedy like the dead president. Um all of my links are in my bio. I have that link tree thing. So you can find anything on there like my YouTube, my Instagram, my uh only fans, like all of that is on there and I update I'm mostly on Twitter um you can find me on Instagram at the PG like the movie rating Kennedy because it's Instagram so it's safe for work and please don't add me on Snapchat (laughs) (laughs) I could write that awesome well uh thank you seriously thank you Kate for taking your time to do this and uh thank you all for listening or watching another edition of singles only podcast (laughs)